Good evening, everyone, or morning, morning or, or afternoon, afternoon, whatever. Whatever. It's, it's just great to be here, no matter any time of the day. It's great to be alive, and happy that God has given us yet another day to rejoice and to praise Him. And uh, we are, even though hopefully our local churches are meeting again, uh, we're still going to be putting this online helps me to practice. It helps get God's Word out there to more folks. So we're going to try to, to keep doing this. So uh, you want to open us with a prayer? Same prayer request as always. Uh, if you have a particular one, let us know. And we'll pray for you. Dear Lord, we are just so thankful that we can come together online and soon in person to, to worship you, Lord, to praise you, to look at your magnificent being and just tremble in all. And Lord, we are just so excited about being in your presence. And Lord, we come to you thankful that you call us your children and and we, we are just so excited. Even though we're not deserving of that, we're still excited. Lord, we pray that you will um, always listen to us that we will always be something that you can, uh, you know, children that you can look down on and just smile and say, they're doing my work. And that's what our prayer is, Lord. And Lord, we pray that because we want to do your work, we lift up the needs that we've been lifting up, Lord. Those that have been suffering from COVID, those that suffer from Alzheimer's, cancer, Lord, that leukemia, there's just so many needs that we have, Lord. But we're lifting them up to you right now, Lord. Lord, um, my on my heart right now is people who are suffering from, from cancer, Lord. And, and I ask that you just touch their bodies and heal it, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your children that come to our services, that watch us online, Lord. We're just so happy and thankful. And God, we ask that you just touch those needs, Lord. Lord, as we study your word today, we ask that you open up our hearts so that we can just glean something new from it, Lord. A new idea, a new practice, new ways of serving you. But Lord, help us to also find new people to reach. Lord, we ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, the past few weeks, we've gone through Jesus' baptism. Uh, we've gone through uh, uh, the exorcism he did. Go the, ahead. The calling. The calling, yeah. as he's called his first disciples. And uh, today, we're going to continue with um, a miracle that he performed, a healing. And if there's ever been a time we need to study about a healing, it is now. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, just uh, about 10 minutes ago, I was cruising through Facebook and saw two more uh, announcements of folks who are asking for prayers, one for someone who has COVID and one for someone's family who the person's just passed away wow. from COVID. It, just in the past 10 minutes. Mm. Uh, and uh, it, it's really draining on our souls, but um, there is still healing going on. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to start reading today Mark 1, 29 through 39. And I want you to keep in mind, Jesus has just exercised a demon from someone. And we're picking up right after that. Mark 1, starting with 29. This is immediately after. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever and they told him about her at once so he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she served them at the evening when the sun had set they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon possessed and the whole city was gathered together at the door then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Mm -hmm. They knew mm -hmm. who he was. That's it. That's the mm -hmm. reading for, uh, well, 
a minute. That's there a are a couple more. There are go through thirty nine. Yeah, go ahead. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and when they found him, they said to him, "Everyone is looking for you." But he said to them, "Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose." I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Mm -hmm. This yes. is the word of God for the people of God. God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So here we have a story of a healing, more exorcisms, and a healing. And I do want to point out, you can pick him up if you want. There's a difference in an exorcism and a healing. And I'd never thought about it before. But if you go to the verses just before this, uh, he he does this exorcism, and in that, he uh, he just gives a command: "Be quiet, come out of him." In an exorcism, there's a confrontation. There's no gentleness. There's no uh, peaceful spirit. It's just a confrontation. You don't belong there. Come out. But with a healing, as you see with this mother-in-law. There and, and those of you who are in the medical profession, you've had doctors who have no bedside manner. <laughs> well, for an exorcism, you don't have to have a bedside manner. For healing, that's what you want, and that's what Jesus provides. You need some gentleness. You need some mm -hmm. kindness. Uh, a human touch. You, you actually need that to help you. And uh, Jesus knew exactly which way to approach each situation. In the exorcism, he confronted. And in the healing, he provided that human touch, a physical touch, which we're actually going to talk about that too. Uh, at this point in his ministry, there are only four disciples. He hasn't called all 12. It's just a very small group. They're still getting to know each other. He's got Andrew and Peter. And we've talked about them during Wednesday nights. And he's got James and John. Those are the four, unless if I'm wrong, you tell me. No. But uh, those are the four who are with him. And it doesn't really say why they go to uh, Simon Peter and Andrew's house. Uh, maybe because they are all new to each other. Maybe they're getting to know each other. Maybe they're just wanting to go make some plans for their ministry. That's more than likely it's those two things. But they go there. And the way they broach this subject with Peter, uh, with Jesus, they don't even really say, would you help? Do you notice what they do? In they verse, told him about her. They just tell Jesus about her. And we don't know if they, maybe they're saying, uh, let's keep the noise down because she's sick, or let's stay in this room because uh, we don't want to go in that room with the illness. We don't know what words were said. Look, we're hearing a lot of that now. We don't want exactly. to go in that room with the illness. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, David Jeremiah says that um, Jesus' healing of Peter's mother-in-law was typical of his other earth, earthly miracles. Mm -hmm. Tender and personal, mm -hmm. low-key and matter-of-fact, without the fanfare that other healers often saw. Mm -hmm. There were other people going around healing people too. Yeah. They, but they wanted a big audience. They wanted to have their name. And they probably charged people yeah. for that. And and But Jesus didn't do any of those things. We don't even know her name. We're not even told her name, just the mother-in-law. Uh, and there's no plea for healing. But as soon as Jesus hears, it says he went to her. He didn't say... I, let me take care of it, or whatever he said, we're not told. He, Like he said, matter of fact, I'm going to take care of the business. He marches down to where she is. Now, that broke a whole lot of rules, him going to where she was. One, you didn't interact. Men and women did not interact unless they were married. They were not supposed to, for him to be in her where she was sick, probably a bedroom, you don't do that. That's taboo. Another thing, you don't go where sick people are. You, If someone is sick, you stay away. A lot of times they're cast out completely. I think of leprosy. Not that that's what she had, but but you think about that. You, 
you just don't go oh, around. She didn't have that. No, you just don't go around people who are sick. Um, he um, at, at that time the the guests and the hosts had certain roles they were to play, and he didn't act as a guest. He didn't stay in the main place where they wanted him. He went right on into the house like he knew where he was. But he was one of the family. And uh, it, he just broke so many rules when he did this. And even in the healing itself, he doesn't do what he does in a lot of other healings. And we will mention other healings in a minute. But do you notice what he does? He just goes to her, takes her hand, helps her up, or picks her up in some versions. In a lot of other healings that he does, he says your sins are forgiven or your faith has made you whole. We don't know of a word that's spoken here. No. But he touches her. There's that human touch. He gets her up. And her response is what? She starts serving. We don't hear if any. There's no dialogue in this at all. None except where they tell Jesus about her, and we don't have the exact words there. We don't know if she says thank you. We don't know if she says, oh, you're wonderful for helping me. Uh, she just gets up and starts serving them. And I do want to to point that out. She doesn't just serve Jesus. She starts serving them. Yeah. She realizes that Jesus has already changed not only her life, but theirs too. Uh -huh. And that's the beauty of a, a healing is that it does not just affect the person being healed. It affects all around them. It, that's right. That's kind of reminiscent of the, the dropping the, the man that was paralyzed mm -hmm. through the roof. Mm -hmm. The people that took him there are the ones that probably got more of a blessing than even the one healed. Mm -hmm. But they knew who Jesus was. Yeah. So. It's when Jesus blesses us, that blessing spills over to those around us. And uh, I, I'm going to talk a, a minute about this guy. Me? It's, yes, good. Um, of course, he had COVID. We both did uh, several months ago. And he had a much worse time than I did. And um, after he came through with it, the doctor told him recently, you're lucky to be here that somebody was watching over you. And uh, for a physician to say that, that's pretty strong. But uh, Johnny, now that he's come through this, that blessing is spilling over to others in different ways. Um, he is, you know, we, we, if we go out to eat, he's always been a decent tipper. But now he will even leave a bigger tip just out of appreciation for how hard they're working. And that's a blessing that he's more aware of others and what they're going through and tries to give them a blessing. Um, he's always liked to pay it forward, like in a drive through by paying for the car behind him. But he does it almost every time we go to a drive through now. That's, that's that blessing spilling over. Um, as his response to Jesus blessing him, He's paying that out to others. Not that he owes a debt or that uh, he could pay a debt if there was one. There's no way to pay for a healing. But just because he feels so blessed, he has to, to give that to others. Um, I, I do want to share, and I, I put this in, excuse me, in Sweetwater's bulletin. There, uh, a while back, I was sharing some prayer requests for a preacher named Wes Moy and uh, he's right here he's in South Georgia he's the uh, preacher let me look at this which church at Pine Forest United Methodist in Dublin that's not that far away from us um, and he got COVID and for more than a hundred days he was in the hospital he was on the ventilator he was not doing well at all and he's not on Facebook, but his church members are. And they started posting, asking for prayers for him. And from all the likes and all of the responses and uh, things that they've gathered, there, his kids 
figure there's been at least 4,500 people praying for him in the past months. And uh, he has recently been released from the hospital. He's still going through rehab because he hasn't uh, regained the use of his legs and feet because the muscles just aren't working right after that long in the hospital. But he said, this is what he says, um, there's no way I could be bitter with God about why this happened. Why not me? God's goodness outweighs anything I've gone through. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And uh, he, he said his heart breaks for those who weren't as fortunate as him. And uh, he said, I'm learning more and more. It's not my place to second guess God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And uh, he believes that. And he just wants to uh, keep moving. He can't wait to get back in the pulpit and keep preaching God's word. Now that is a, a modern healing right here in South Georgia. And I get goosebumps talking about it. You know, I, I've mentioned I keep seeing announcements, prayers wanted, and and sometimes God doesn't heal, and I don't know the why, I, but I, it's not, like he said, it's not my place to know why it happened, it's my place to keep asking him for the healing, uh, because a physical body healing is not the only kind of healing that happens, I'll get to that in a minute too, but I wanted to share that. Uh, there is a video on the conference website where they've interviewed him. I would strongly urge you to go listen to it. Uh, he knows how fortunate he is to have have lived this. Um, but there is a blessing that comes out from his illness. All these other people who were praying for him, their faith has been strengthened as we have prayed for him, as we have seen him come through. Uh, that may not happen with everybody, but we see it with him, and that bolsters our faith. Um, now, as soon as this is done and she's serving them, uh, you notice verse uh, 32 gets right back into this dark world they're living in that's full of sin, demon-possessed people, uh, people who have no hope. And all of a sudden, what happens? They're, uh, they're, they're being healed. They're, they're, they're showing up. Not, yeah. And, and, in fact, the whole town, it seems like, showed up. Yeah. They're could, showing up. Could you imagine what would happen if, if the whole town showed up at our church tomorrow? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. We would, I would be like, what do, what do I do first, you know? Well, this is the first time they have hope. Mm -hmm. They're hearing from word of mouth, that blessing spreading, and they're hearing about this man, and they're bringing all the sick and demon-possessed. And it does say the whole town gathered at the door. He drove out demons. So he right away he does that. And then, in verse 35, he does one more very important thing. Yes. He gets up early. After going to bed, he got up early. It just says, risen long before daylight. And he went out to a solitary pl place, and there he prayed. Mm -hmm. he, he knew that he needed to reconnect with God, the source of his strength, the source of the healing. He knew that he had to spend some time alone with God. Uh, just to breathe and sometimes we have to do that uh, even when we're not the ones doing the healing we have to step back and just breathe breathe in God and I forget who all I've heard several preachers say that breathe in God breathe out the worry and stress breathe in God breathe out me mm -hmm. you have to pull him into you and get rid of your own selfishness and focus on him and that's exactly what Jesus did and as soon as he'd done that they're looking for him in those last verses Jesus focuses again let's go somewhere else yeah let's go out and do it again I got to I got more work got to do that's why I've come is to do this work let's go do it now so that's uh, what we have to do we have to 
be encouraged when we go to church on Sunday yep. morning. When we get up the next day, we got to say, hey, we got a full week ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Let's go out and find somebody mm -hmm. that needs God. Yeah. Now, I know we all have jobs. Peter and James and them, they had a job. <laughs> but they still went out and found someone. Yeah. They and followed Jesus to these towns, other towns. You know, just, he did exactly what the woman had done, the mother-in-law had done. As soon as she was healed, she served. As soon as he had replenished his strength and reconnected with God, he went back out to serve. Mm -hmm. How can we not do the same? That, that's exactly what we're to do. Now, I mentioned he, uh, he did a whole lot of healings, and I went and looked them up. Um, do you want to share? I, just, I didn't write down each one. Uh, I think there are 20-something healings that he does. Uh, this side. Okay. He healed leprosy, mm -hmm. cast out demons, healed people that were paralyzed, mm -hmm. healed people that had hemorrhaging of blood, mm -hmm. healed the blind. He healed people whose whose body parts were shriveled with a up. shriveled hand. Uh -huh. He healed people who didn't talk. He healed people who were deaf. He healed the crippled. He healed people who had dropsy. I had to look that up. I didn't know what dropsy was. It's, it's edema. What we know today is edema. It was dropsy. But he healed that. He, he even restored people's ears and other body parts that, that were no longer there. <laughs> yeah. When, the, when they cut off the yeah. ear of the guard, <laughs> he restored the whole thing. Yep. You know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, share this verse. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 says... He gave all disciples power and authority over demons and to heal diseases. Now that says all disciples. All disciples. So that's that is, not just talking about the twelve, not in my mind. That's everybody who's called. That means you and me mm -hmm. and you. All disciples. And the disciples, there are stories in the Bible of what some of the healings they did. Go ahead. The disciples, now Peter and John, they... They healed the lame man at the gate called Beautiful in Acts. Mm -hmm. Peter healed the sick. Philip healed the insane, the paralyzed, and the lame. Ananias mm -hmm. healed Paul's blindness. Mm -hmm. Peter healed people with palsy. And Paul healed men who had never walked and many others. Mm -hmm. So there were healings going on then, even after Jesus had went back to heaven. He gave us he gave them, I'm going to say them, the authority to heal and to have authority over demons and, mm -hmm. and all that. But he also gives, as she said earlier, to us because we are his disciples. Mm -hmm. Sometimes healing may only be when we take a food basket to somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's, there's different ways of healing. Okay. It's not just the physical body. Right now, I kind of focus on that because of COVID. Uh, but there's so many more ways of healing. Um, and one of those that is needed now, Jesus heals loneliness. Yes, he does. And there are um, a lot of lonely people. Out there are. There, I mean, I spend many days here at the Parsonage by myself. Uh, because he's at work, kids are at school, uh, and I just don't want to get out, and a lot of you don't either, and potentially expose myself to any more illness. But that's a very lonely way to live. Um, so it could be self-imposed. It could be because of other people's judgment. Um, some of us don't want to go around others because of what they'll think of us. Uh, I know I've, I've heard some addicts talk and say, well, <clears throat> I wouldn't feel comfortable there because of what they've said about me. I have a friend online who has said, you know, I have some people, she said, I've just met them, but they've heard my name and they've already formed these opinions of me. She said, I don't want to go around them. I'm not comfortable. So what, however our loneliness comes about, Christ can heal that. I remember um, when I shared about Jonathan's issues when he first started having the issues at church. And when I saw one of the ladies from the church in Huddle House. There was actually two of them in there. And um, 
She goes, oh, how's your son doing? How is he doing? Is he doing okay? Is he being haved and all that stuff? And Jonathan heard your yeah. son, right? Yeah. So he perked up, and I, you know, I saw him. I said, why don't you ask him? He cooked your food. <laughs> so she said, oh, hey, you know, and all that. But God heals. Uh, I mean, it's just remarkable when we turn everything over to God and allow him to heal our emotional problems, our um, self-image, our mm -hmm. physical sicknesses, the mental sickness. Well, we're getting into that. Okay, I'll let you go. <laughs> go ahead. But when we, we have that relationship with God, He can heal us. He takes care of us. Sometimes we don't even have to ask. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I, I used to, as a young man, I used to have a problem because I saw my dad um, abuse pills. And I didn't even take an aspirin for a headache because I didn't even want to go down that path, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought that may have been what led to it. And I said, God's too busy to heal my headaches. Or God's too busy to take care of my toothache because he's busy, you know. But as I grew older, I realized that it's okay to, to take an aspirin because God has given us the knowledge and the plants that it, mm -hmm. that makes that mm -hmm. the aspirin comes from, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to go to him and say, Lord, I've got a really bad headache. Can you, if, if it's your will, will you ease it up? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes away like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it's just the stress of me saying, Lord, I need you. Mm -hmm. That that helps it to, me to just, as she said, breathe in Jesus and breathe, breathe out, out me. me. Breathe out my problems. Mm -hmm. Breathe out my sins. Breathe out the temptations. Breathe, breathe out mm -hmm. the things that are worrying us to the point where mm -hmm. we just focus on that instead of focusing on God. And, and, and one thing I learned when I was at Golden Gate Christian Academy was mm -hmm. uh, we had to, to read a book on, and I don't know why they made teenagers read a book on on why we worry and stuff. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> but one of the things that stuck with me is when we worry, or we have worry in our life that creates doubt. Mm -hmm. And worry and tells God, God, you're a liar. You said you'd take care of me, but here I am focusing on this. We don't need to worry. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a great baseball player. I wish I knew his name, but I, 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 I don't know his name. But this was from the 80s, and he said, I read an interview, he says, he doesn't worry. He doesn't worry about things that he can't change, because if he can't change them, why worry about them? And he doesn't worry about things he can change because if he can change it, why worry about it? That may not be, he may not have been, because it's the same guy that also said the, the first thing he checks is the windshield factor. When he meant windshield factor. But anyway, we don't worry. Hmm. You do, I mean, you're quoting part of the, the, um, the 12th, the, well, maybe he was influenced by that at some point. Yeah, that's why I'm wondering if, uh, because that is, Lord, give me this, the serenity prayer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it so, took me a minute to come up with it, uh, but that is a part of it. Now, there is one healing you do have to ask for, and that's the healing of the sickness of sin. Mm -hmm. That is the one you do have to say, Lord, Lord. please heal me of this, forgive yeah. me of this. And, uh, but that is also the one that will restore you to God. You'll have that relationship with Him. And you'll feel better about asking Him for what, what healing you need, whether it's for you or someone you love. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the most important healing. Uh, but that is another healing. There's a couple other healings. The physical ailments we've talked about that He can heal and will heal. Uh, this one you touched on emotional, emotional wounds. wounds. Yeah, uh, don't you think that um, when we forgive people, that's when we say I forgive you and I love you with the love of the Lord, that we're actually healing those wounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that that God's healing those wounds when we forgive other people. God heals the wounds in us. Yeah, and who knows, we may have wounded that person and God heals them too. Yeah. And those, those emotional wounds, that could come from past addiction, could come from child abuse, could come from uh, 
<laughs> good gosh, anybody that's ever hurt you mm -hmm. could have has scarred you in some way, and you need healing from it. And uh, Christ offers that, and He also heals hopelessness, which is mm -hmm. I have felt that a lot lately. I'll be honest, just just hopelessness. That's where I'm breathing in me more than Him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have to stop and refocus and ask him to heal that hopelessness because I may be reading of several who are dying, needing prayers, but I'm also reading many who are recovering. Uh, we've turned in his big breathing machine this yeah, week. Yeah. That gives me hope. And I'll admit, I had fear of doing that, so I held on to it a little bit longer than I wanted. I don't know why I was afraid to turn that machine in. I have no idea. You're relying on that instead of him. Right, and I feel that if I turn that thing in, I may take a sudden turn for the worse and need it, and I won't have it. But so, I, I did turn it back in. Yeah. I call it Big Blue. And <laughs> yeah, but we uh, there there is still healing going on. There is. Uh, many people have that gift. I don't know who all does, uh, but here's some questions I want. I like to leave folks with questions. For them to search because they got homework to do we all got homework to do um right now every single one of us is praying for healing from something what are you praying for healing from and if you're not praying if you know you you're worrying about something you you need healing and you're not praying about it why not okay so that's that's one couple of questions there what are you praying for healing from a second question, how has God already healed you? Because he has at some point in your past. He has healed you. Uh, I can't tell you how many kids, and this is a silly little one, but kids who are toddlers, if they get a little scratch, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, and there'll be one little scratch. And that, But you know, even those little scratches, you have healed from those at some point. You've healed from bigger things too. What has God already healed you of. And the last question, how have you responded to the past healing? And how are you going to respond when he heals you again? At some point this week, he will heal you. And I don't know what it's from, whether it's from a migraine, whether it's from exhaustion because you put in too many hours at work, whether it's from worrying over a bill that's due, He's going to heal you this week. And the healing may come in, in ways that you won't even think about, such as the person ahead of you paying for your breakfast mm -hmm. or your lunch mm -hmm. because you are feeling like nobody cares. Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Healing of, that, that's again, that's that pouring that blessing to others mm -hmm. and you help heal and you don't even know that God's using you to heal. Just by buying an Egg McMuffin for somebody. Yeah, and believe it's an easy thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Because, and when you do it, the person, about the, they're like, Yeah, they're really happy that, so that just, you did that. that so. so I want you to reflect on those questions. What but, uh, do you need healing from? How's he already healed you? And how are you going to respond when he does it again? And everything you do, do it for the glory of God. That's right. That's right. So that that's my message. Okay. Your message. That's God's message. <laughs> Did you just do the, the fireworks? The oh my gosh. Ready? Let's do it. I do that. I taught that to the kids at school. And and, and if I don't do that, they'll be like, yeah, do it again. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> so. That's funny. That's funny. So know that this week we're praying for your healing. Please pray for ours because uh, every one of us I needs need it. it. We all need some healing. I uh, hope you have a wonderful week. We're going to um, close. I'll pray us out. If that's all right. And um, and let's remember that healing. Our beautiful Heavenly Savior, we thank you for healing. You have healed us in the past. You have forgiven our sins when we didn't deserve it. You have healed these little tiny scrapes when we were babies. But you have healed our bigger heartaches when we have lost loved ones. You have you're continuing to heal every single day as we're going through COVID, as we're going through being overworked, 
as we're going through every problem that you faced. You're healing us of those. Let us remember that you are the one doing the healing. And then let us turn around and do just like the mother-in-law did and serve you and everyone else who needs to be served. Let us be tools of your healing. Don't let us turn away in fear. Let us be anxious and willing to be used. Lord, I ask that you do keep us safe this week. Let us share ways that we are being healed and that we are being instruments of your healing. And then let us come back together to celebrate the beautiful physician that is you. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Have a great, great week, and let us know if you need anything. We love you.